Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 28. We're going to build a simple blog with Ferroala version 2 and include the sanitized gem. This is a follow-up to earlier Ruby Snacks where I started with Ferroala version 1, upgraded to version 2, then also showed you how to upload the image to Amazon 3S. Going to be redoing these episodes since Ferroala 2 is different, and also I wanted to add some testing and make it just a bit better. If you want to code along, you'll need a Rails app created. You can use the cheat sheet from the Get Launching series if you've signed up for my mailing list. One change is that we're going to be using Selenium instead of WebKit so we can look at the pages. So it will not be a headless web driver. It will be a head and you can see the page as it all happens. You'll need to include the gem Selenium web driver in your development gems. You'll see what I mean when we start to run the specs with JavaScript. First up, let's include a basic spec to create our post. Make sure that's working before we include Froala. We're going to have the user create a post by going to the new post path. We're going to fill in the post title, the post author, and the post body. We're going to specify that particular text, and you'll see why soon. Then we'll click the button to create the post. We'll expect it to be created by post count to equal one, and then we'll expect the page to have the post title. Opening up our text editor, let's go ahead and make a new folder for features, as this will be a feature spec. And now I'll include a new file, and go ahead and save it as create post spec dot rb and now include the spec that we've written. We're going to quickly set up our post. We're going to run our spec to make sure it runs correctly and know where to start. But we're going to go ahead and scaffold the post, make it easy peasy for ourselves. And we're just going to have a title, an author, and the body needs to be text because it's going to be a WYSIWYG. It's going to have lots in it. Then we'll run our migration and then run the spec again. In our terminal, let's run that spec just to make sure that it runs correctly. And it does fail and yes, points us in the direction of creating a post. So let's do that with our scaffold. I'll go ahead and just copy paste that command right in there in the terminal. And it creates all that stuff that happens with the scaffold. Now let's go ahead and check out the migration. I like to just double check that and it looks good. Let's go ahead and rake db migrate, and that's done. And now let's run our spec again, and it passes. That's all the spec needed. Now let's add to our feature spec to include the WYSIWYG. So first we're going to change it to be JS true so that we can see what's going on. Then we're going to click a button that is included in the WYSIWYG. I found the exact name for this button by including the WYSIWYG and then inspecting it. So I've done a little bit of that work for you here. It's going to be a data command underline and that's how Froala is built. Then we're going to find the CSS fr element dot fr view which Froala gives us. That's the main section where you would include anything you want. And we're going to set that to this is a great post. Then we're going to expect to have the selector fr-view as that is what you would put in your view to load the WYSIWYG. That's the JavaScript from Froala. That's what it's looking for. And now we're going to make sure that it has CSSP with the text this is a great post. And that's going to make sure that it's including the HTML that we put into the WYSIWYG. Looking back at our spec, Let's replace the feature line to include the tag JS true. Now we will replace the fill in post body with our fine CSS line so that it can put it in the WYSIWYG. And then we'll add our additional expectations. Running the spec again, it should fail because we've added more to the spec. And you see this time it opens the Firefox browser. You will need Firefox with Selenium and it's running through the process that we put it in. And it's saying, uh-oh, I don't actually find that button because we haven't put the WYSIWYG in yet. So now let's do that. We're going to include the gem WYSIWYG Rails, which is the gem for Froala. We're going to install that with bundle install or just plain bundle. Then we're going to need to require the JavaScripts for Froala in our application JS and then the CSS means the Froala editor, the Froala style, and it also requires font awesome, which now comes as a dependency to the WYSIWYG Rails gem. 
Jumping back in our text editor, open up our gem file and include that new awesome gem to include for Awala. And now we'll bundle it up. Now we will open up our app and then assets, JavaScript, application JS, and I'll include it just above TurboLinks. And now opening up style sheets, application CSS, and include it above require tree. And make it a little prettier. There we go. Now we need to add it to our form. We will include the ID WYSIWYG for the form field for our body. Then we're going to include the script at the bottom of the file. So it's WYSIWYG.FROWALA editor. And I'm going to include a very basic setup here. Future episodes will add to this setup. So we're just going to have inline mode false. I think that's easier to see. We're going to have a minimum height so that it opens up that box a little easier for you. And we're just going to have three toolbar buttons to begin with. Bold, italic, and underline. Moving to our posts views. Let's open up that form. We're going to add that ID to the body text area. Now we'll include the script. Make that a little prettier and save that. Now let's run the spec again. Okay, yep, see we have our lovely WYSIWYG. There's still an error because we haven't added the output of the WYSIWYG into our show view. The Farwala documentation lets us know we need to include a class fr-view so that when it puts in the body for the post, it will use the JavaScript to include all that lovely HTML CSS that you've put in. So let's open up that show view and we'll just replace the standard scaffold output with the class fr view with our body. Let's run that again, but it's still failing. Let's see what's going on. Let's add a binding pry and that stops the process and it'll leave the page open for us to view. I found that to be very useful lately in debugging certain items. So we'll run the spec again and it will stop just at the point where we've put in the binding pry. So you'll see if you go back to the terminal, it's in the binding pry, but let's look at the page and you'll see that it's putting out everything in the text. It's not, it's not taking the HTML and applying it to the page. I'd like to take a moment and thank everyone who has commented on the previous Froella videos. It's really inspired me to revisit those videos so that I can make an even better tutorial. One thing to add is that folks asked about how to sanitize the information and put it in the WYSIWYG before saving to the database, which is a very good idea. You don't want any malicious attackers messing up your blog and your app. We're going to use the sanitize gem, which is very flexible so that you can allow a lot of things but keep out the bad things. So we're going to install Gem Sanitize and then bundle it. To use Sanitize, we're going to put in a before save method that will sanitize everything that's been put into that body text block through the Froala WYSIWYG, sanitize it, and then save it. With this spec, we'll say that it sanitizes the post body with a relaxed sanitation. So here I put in, we're going to have a new post, right, because it's before it's saved. And then the body is going to have some good HTML and make it bold, but then we'll put in something bad, like a script. Mm-mm, don't want to allow any of those. And I actually copied this right from Wikipedia as an example of a malicious attack. And we'll expect when we say post sanitized body to equal just the good HTML. For time's sake, I'm not going to run it. Let's go ahead and make it pass. So we'll require sanitize in our post model and say before save, sanitize that body. And we'll define sanitize body as sanitize.fragment. It's just a piece of the page, not the whole page. The post body, and then we'll set that configuration as relaxed. First, we need to exit out of our binding pry. Now let's add the sanitize gem to our gem file, and then bundle it. Next, we'll include our spec for the post model. Now we'll add that new sanitize body method to our post class. Let's run the model spec first to make sure that it's passing correctly. And it does. 
the final step to passing our feature spec is to go ahead and include the method on the post body to say HTML safe. That method says whatever text is coming from that attribute is safe for HTML. You only want to use this if you have indeed sanitized it before saving it. There are warning messages when you look up this method in the Ruby docs to instead use some kind of sanitize method instead. But that's very limiting actually. That's why the sanitize gem exists so that you have flexibility and can decide how strict you want to be. We're going to be fairly loose and allow things like tables and images and links. That's why I'm using sanitize relaxed. We'll make that change in the show file, adding simply HTML safe. Alrighty, let's run our spec and it loads it on up. And we'll see this time that the paragraph HTML is not there. We simply see this is a great post. Let's exit out again and it passes. One last step though, you don't want to forget if you've put in a binding pry, you want to go on back, take that out and then save. If you want to look up some more information about the Frawala gem, WYSIWYG Rails, go ahead to that link. And of course, look at Sanitize. See what options it gives you. You can be stricter if you'd like. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Ruby Thursday. If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to sign up. We have some exciting things coming up soon. You don't want to miss it. And if you are not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click that big red button and do so. If you have any questions, leave them below. I obviously respond to them and it inspires me, so keep at it. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and see you soon.